If you would like to follow along our presentation tonight, we're going to use a platform called Pear Deck to give you an opportunity to engage and uh, also to model some uh, tools that we use during the school day. Pretty simple ones. If you want to join this particular uh, uh, presentation, just encourage you to go to the chat and click on the link that's right there. You can alternatively open a new tab on your browser and type in joinpd.com. Once you get to that website, you can put in this six letter code. That'll launch you into the class. I see that we already have 20 participants in the class connected. We've got three people on the call though, so we'll wait just a minute or two to give some other folks an opportunity to join. Again, two methods for joining the Pear Deck that gives you access to tonight's presentation uh, during the time that we're together. The first one is to go to the chat. Once in the chat, you can click on the link provided. That's the link to the Pear Deck. Takes you right to it. Or you can open a new browser, type in joinpd.com and the six letter code once it prompts you to do so. Still have a few people joining the Paradox, so we'll hold on while we're we, uh, while that continues to happen. And I'll open by saying tonight our primary focus is going to be hybrid learning for sure. We're going to be talking about the um, transition that and especially the timeline that we should be thinking about as we prepare for hybrid learning. But I want to take a moment just to acknowledge that life is, I don't remember a time in my lifetime when life has been more stressful, that we faced greater crises as, a, as humanity, as a nation, as a community, as we have right now. We obviously have health crises, political crises, social justice crises, the list goes on in so many ways, and they all are crescendoing here at this moment right here in mid-January 2021. The first question I want to ask you as we get ready to start this uh, experience here in Pear Deck and the presentation tonight, I uh, just wonder if you would take a moment, and the way Pear, Pear Deck works, you have an opportunity right now to go ahead and um, write a response into the Pear Deck. And if you wouldn't mind doing that, I think uh, it would be helpful to us to, to know how you, you believe your Titans feeling about school, about our national crises, about life in general. We'd love to hear what you have to say. I'll look at the responses here in just a moment. I'll track the responses. We got 15 out of 50 respondents in there. If you don't mind just typing a sentence or a word, Give you a few more seconds to put that in there, and then I'll start reading off some of the responses. If you go back, uh, once you're done with your response, if you go back to the Zoom meeting, you'll be able to see the responses on your share on the screen that I'm sharing with you. So here are some of our responses, mostly passive or numb. Doesn't feel like she's learning much. You know, my senior's a bit bummed yeah, about not connecting. Oh, yeah, first and only year at Dominion. Ouch. Yeah, sure. The Titans are signed up for hybrid, but I'm reconsidering keeping them in distance. Hopefully this presentation tonight will give you some insight about uh, help, help, you, help you make that final decision. Indifference, frustrated, discouraged. I'm glad they're okay in spite of being frustrated and discouraged. Yeah, disappointed in how senior years turned out. Me too. Nervous about college applications. That happens every year. Hanging in there, positive overall. Really appreciate you uh, just sharing some of those. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's help, helpful to have a reality check. So, yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that your seniors involved in athletics. You know, I know it's a little bit controversial for some folks, I suppose, to say, why are kids on the court, on the track, on the field, on the mat, but they're not in the classroom? And it, it, my perspective about that is this simple. Um, bringing 14 young women on a varsity basketball team to our gymnasium 
to participate is a great opportunity for them to be engaged. And frankly, we can do that and have safe protocols in place a whole lot easier than we can bring back hundreds at a time. So I'm grateful for the opportunity to do that. Those are opportunities. The other thing I would say about that is I wouldn't say that distance learning is perfect, but distance basketball is impossible. So we really do want to provide these opportunities to our student athletes and it's a challenge, but um, we're very grateful that our students have that opportunity. But tonight, again, our focus is on hybrid learning. And um, I just do want to point out in light of, you know, the uh, emotions that your Titans may be experiencing, I hope that you'll feel good about reaching out to our school counseling team, to an assistant principal or a teacher, if you feel like you need some additional, your student needs some additional support. There's nothing we long to do more than to connect with your students. It is difficult for us, but we want to do everything we can uh, to meet your students' needs where they are, whether those need to be academic or social, emotional at, at this time. Our focus tonight is going to be understanding the timeline for our transition to hybrid learning. We have a goal. Objective number two here is to prevent any transmission of COVID-19 within the building. We, and I'm going to pause right here and just say we will not prevent COVID-19 from affecting our community, of course. We have, at this point, it's safe to say, a dozen or more staff members who have been directly affected and have become, over the course of the last 10 months, infected with COVID-19. We have probably, do we have dozens, maybe going on 100 students and families that have been affected directly by COVID-19. So it's not possible for us to have no families, students, or staff members affected by COVID-19. What is possible is for us to implement strategies for those staff members and students who are attending school so that we don't transmit it from one person to another within the building. I really do believe that's an achievable goal. We've been working on that since August, and we have no known transmissions within the building, and we intend to keep it that way. And tonight's presentation is largely its purpose is to share with you the mitigation strategies that are in place to make that happen for our students who have chosen a hybrid learning model. So that's our all the time objective. We're just setting the table for the fulfillment of that objective over the next 90 school days. Uh, tonight, specifically, we're going to introduce you to the hybrid learning playbook and show you where to find it in Schoology. It can be a point of reference to answer your questions. There's a lot of information that will come to you tonight. So we'll show you where you'll ultimately be able to look and get answers to your questions. We're gonna walk you through a day in the life of a hybrid learner, tell you what their experience is gonna be like. It's not normal school, it's not. We want you to know what it's gonna be like. So we're gonna get them off the bus, put them back on the bus and talk about everything they're gonna be doing in between. And while we're doing it, we're gonna identify health mitigation strategies that staff and students will be putting into place during their time in the building in order again, to prevent the transmission of, of, of COVID-19 inside the building. That's our goal while educating your Titans. So our agenda for tonight, we're taking these first few minutes just to frame our meeting and make sure you know what our purposes are tonight. And then we wanna talk, a, uh, it's important for us to talk a little bit about when hybrid learning will begin. Uh, that, at that point, I wanna demonstrate for you and show you where you can find the hybrid learning playbook if my presentation skills are strong enough. And again, we'll walk you through that day in the life of a hybrid learner, saving a few minutes at the end for questions that go unanswered during our time together. I, uh, we did receive about a dozen questions in advance, and uh, you can certainly continue to drop questions into the um, question bank that was distributed in advance. We will, all the questions that came in before 7 p.m. tonight, we will either answer in the presentation tonight or if they're kind of off topic, like some of them had to do with athletics and things like that, we're not going to address those now, but I'll get back to you um, by next Tuesday, if not tonight, with answers to those questions as well. Uh, the chat can be a, an effective place to um, share questions with me, but if you would let me go through the presentation first, that'll probably be easiest just so I can come back to those that are in the uh, We'll come, we'll come to those in the chat when we get to the Q&A time. I would just recommend that because um, I'm gonna, I've got a ton of content here that we wanna make sure we get across to you. It's very likely that we may answer some questions that are on your mind later in the presentation. 
All right. The big question that has to be on your mind is, has a really big, we do not know answer. When will hybrid learning begin? It's very, very important for me to state that the original, originally planned date was the beginning of the second semester, Thursday, January 21st. That will not be the day that we begin hybrid learning. And the reason it will not be, be the day is that health measurements within our community are not in a good place. They're at the highest level of risk at this time. And uh, with just seven days to go, the school board's metrics are extremely unlikely, I dare say impossible to meet between now and the time that uh, we would, but not between now and next Thursday. So it won't be Thursday, January 21st. In the weeks to, weeks to come, we should find out, of course, we, we, here, here's the thing. We, I'm going to close out my email. Sorry about that, y'all. I get email, obviously, pretty much any time of day, and don't want those popping up on my screen right now. So let's see. Um, I'm going to go over the timeline and the indicators that you can begin to track so you can sense when we will be returning to hybrid learning. But let me just point out a couple of other things quickly before I dive more deeply into that. Tomorrow, just in case you heard otherwise, tomorrow will be a regular day of synchronous distance learning. We had planned for that to be a teacher work day when we thought we could start hybrid learning on Thursday, January 21st. But since that's not gonna happen, we don't wanna lose a day. So we are gonna have the last day of the first semester be a synchronous learning day. Tomorrow, it's a B day. Just bear in mind next week, student holidays, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So school resumes on Thursday, January 21st. The second semester begins, but it will be all across Loudoun County Public Schools, a 100% distance learning day. There will be one thing different on Thursday, January 21st, in hopeful anticipation that we will soon be moving to a hybrid learning model. We do need to shift our bell schedule so that the bell schedule works for a community of learners that are gathering in a building. The distance learning bell schedule that we have been operating with is fantastic for our distance learning environment. It's not going to work very well for hundreds of kids in the building, first and foremost, because our bus transportation schedule is going to have our students arriving a little bit later than uh, 9 a.m. In order to model this, I hope I hope that I can pull this off here. So give me some feedback, if you would, uh, Mrs. Comey, Aiden, and Ms. Maldonado, if this doesn't work well. I'm going to take you to Schoology. By clicking on this link right here, you can do the same if you're in the Pear Deck. You can click on this link. It'll take you to Schoology. And when I get to Schoology, hopefully you're going to see this. Somebody just confirmed for me that you're seeing that. Yeah, we can see it. All right. That's beautiful. Fantastic. I don't even know here. I'm, I'm in a particular page of Schoology that's related to my work responsibilities. So this page isn't one that you have access to, it really doesn't matter where you land in Schoology when you open it up. The thing I want you to do is I want you to go over to your name. Your name's always here. And I want you to drop down that little carrot right there. And when you do, every single person in the Dominion High School community, staff, student, and parent should see a Dominion High School. This is essentially an intranet for us. And if you'll click on that, it takes you to a promised land of what will be soon a bevy of information about distance learning. And it already contains a ton of information about school in general. The only non-intuitive part of this process is to get to anything significant other than these updates. You'll see here that I've written, you got to go to resources right over here. You got to go to resources. That's the only thing that's not particularly intuitive. Once you know to go there, once you do that, you land on essentially this Dominion High School intranet that includes all of us as a Titan community. And you can find information here about academic departments, academic support through our AP Support Center, Math Lab, et cetera. You know, when we get more activities going, they'll be built out here. And uh, we've got all kinds of different things, opportunity, uh, connection to Atlas, um, 
website. But the one that I want to point your attention to right now, and my goodness, I have mistitled it tonight. Let me just edit that while we're here. Not something you would need to do in the future, but this is the hybrid learning playbook here. Thanks for bearing with my mistake. So you're going to click on that hybrid learning playbook. And it's going to take you into a place where you can find some important information. And while this all is not all built out tonight, as was to speak, it is being built out over the past couple of weeks and into the next couple as we anticipate that return to school. So one of the things that is critically right here, every single one of you can go here right now and look this up, is our bell schedule that we will transition to on Thursday. And I won't dwell on it a lot right now since you can look it up yourself. I also, this is important enough. I'm going to send this information through a connected email to you sometime between now and Thursday. And I just want to point out that our start time for advisory is going to be 9.15, not 9 a.m. Everybody's going to like that. School getting out a little bit, uh, starting a little bit earlier and actually getting out a little bit earlier too. I'm sorry, school starting a little bit later. And getting out just a little bit earlier and i realize what this does of course is compresses our day a little bit but it's necessary obviously for us to do a whole bunch of things that are important for example we got to fit the school day within the seven hour teacher contract day so seven and a half hours are contracted with a 30 minute lunch so this allows us to have a little lead time for teachers to come in the building um, before students do and still get our instructional blocks in so the big and significant change here is that we've needed to tighten things up just a little bit and we're starting a little bit later. And, um, and and here it is. So that's where you can find that information. And again, I'll send it to you. I'll push it to you through other means um, early next week. So that's our bell schedule. Yes, that that's not just a rumor. That is true. That's changing. All right. I want to get back to my pair deck. How do I do that? Let's see, got a little covered up here. I'll figure it out. It must be, oops. Oh, back to the beginning. I don't think I want to do that. Let's see what I want to do here. This is where I need a student to help me along. What have I done here? Let's see. Thanks, y'all, for your patience with me. I lost my link. Maybe I gotta click that green thing. Nope. All right, what I'm gonna do is stop sharing for just a second so I can get up. There we go. Thanks for your patience with me. That was the key. Let me see if I can get back to sharing that now. Thanks, everybody. I am experiencing the joys of distance learning a lot like our teachers do and your students. All right. Hopefully, we're back to a point where you can see me. See uh, the presentation. Now I've lost my chat feature. Woohoo! Thanks for being patient with me. You're good, Dr. Burr. We can see the link. Oh. oh, until I did that. Okay, cool. Here we go. Thank you, Mrs. Comai, for giving me confidence. We were ready to roll to the next slide. Okay, so the next thing I want you to know this metrics to determine the timeline for hybrid learning. We're going to get back to hybrid learning when local health conditions improve. And in order for you to track that, what I would encourage you to do, what I'm doing every day, is I'm using my device to track this information. So you can go to the Dominion High School, I'm sorry, to the Loudoun County Public Schools website, and shortly down from the top, you can see this LCPS COVID-19 case data. There's a wealth of information about how our community is faring, how our schools are faring with uh, COVID-19. And if you click on this particular tab right here, LCPS COVID-19 case data, and bookmark that, it takes you, if you scroll down a little bit, it takes you to a place 
Oops, I lost those slides I wanted in there. What did I do with that? All right, so it takes you to a place. I'm going to scroll through a couple of slides here because I think I should have one more slide here. I guess I lost it somewhere in translation. Sorry about that. All right. Well, we can fix that. I'll go to the website here and just show you. Hopefully I can do that and get back where I want to be. Ms. Coma, we're looking at that same page now, but we're live on the website. Does that, does that seem like where we're at? Yes, we're good. Well, thanks so much for helping me here. So once you click on that link and you slide down, lots of information here, but these are the two. The fact that these two are in red, highest risk, this is why we're not going to start hybrid learning next Thursday. Two numbers here are targeted to be under 200. That number that's 419.6. That is, um, I'm sorry, we're looking at it in Spanish right here. Let me see if I can get it back to English. I was looking at it in Spanish earlier today. Oh, well, let me tell you what that is. It, 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 is the, it is the number of, it's a ratio, the number of residents per 100,000 people in our county that are, that have uh, been uh, diagnosed with a new case of COVID-19 in the past two weeks, in the past 14 days. So we are averaging per 100,000 residents over 400 new cases. The target for that number, by the way, to get us out of highest risk category is 200. So you can see we're way out of line with what keeps us out of the highest risk category. And we've been there for over a month. This particular ratio down here simply says this percentage is every test that's given, every COVID-19 test that's administered, how many of them are turning out positive. And we want that number to get us out of highest risk zone. We'd love for it to be down like 5%. And when I say we, the medical community that advises all of us about our community's level of risk, the medical community would like that number to be 5% or lower. The number that gets us out of highest risk category and allows us to open school is 10%. And you can see as of today, we climbed to 17%, which is the highest it's been in a while. That number, obviously, over the last 14 days average, that's going to take a while to come down. One of these two metrics will need to be reduced below the highest risk category. Again, a number of 200 here, a number of 10% here to get us back in school. Once that happens for five consecutive days, we will commence the hybrid learning, pro, uh, hybrid, hybrid learning plan. So that's what we're looking for. That's what we're hoping to have happen here in very short order. All right, thanks for bearing with me here as I starting to get a handle on where I want to be and where I want to navigate. This is a complicated slide right here that adds uh, some complexity, and I'm going to skip it tonight. I do want you to know the school board on Tuesday night added some, um, essentially added a, a new set of metrics that will allow them to make a school classroom, school-wide and cluster-wide decisions if some classrooms, schools, or school clusters within Loudoun County would be advised to close because of their local and school-based transmission concerns, but without closing the entire school system. And obviously that behooves us so that we can keep as many students learning in safe environments as possible. That's a complicated matrix, Won't, wouldn't be implemented until we actually get back in school. So that'll be the topic of another future town hall meeting. The rest of what we want to do tonight is talk about this day in the life of the hybrid learner. And we've been planning for weeks, obviously, to welcome students back. And I just want to point out the seven universal con things that we're thinking about in terms of the science. The most important thing that we need everyone to do, staff, students, and parents alike, is stay home if we're less than 100%. If we got a, a runny nose on a particular day, some body aches that we can't explain because we we're at the weight room doing a really intense workout yesterday, we just need that student, that staff member to stay home until it's clear why those body aches, runny nose, cough, or sore throat have emerged. We don't want students coming to school this year at 88% wellness. Most years we do. 
but not this year, not this year. We need every single person who comes into the building to be 100%. So we will do some checks, uh, a lot of self-assessment to try to help make sure students stay home and staff members stay home unless they're 100% well. The second thing we need to do is protect against 15 minutes of close contact with any other individual in the school. And so everything we're about to talk about tonight is, uh, is designed to keep no two people in the entire school environment would spend 15 minutes in close contact with one another. By close contact, we mean within six feet of distance from others. Now, please note we're talking about 15 minutes of close contact with a single and one particular other individual. There'll be times during any given school day in a comprehensive high school like ours, where you're gonna have some passing time of a few seconds with other human beings who are gonna be within your six foot bubble. That's not a major concern according to the science. It's a major concern when we get in close contact and we linger there for lengthy periods of time lengthy periods of time adding up to 15 cumulative minutes in a 24 hour period. So we wanna avoid that and everything we're about to talk about puts us in a position, our students and staff, where we have no reason to be in another person's six foot bubble anywhere near 15 minutes cumulatively on any given day. Wearing the mask is the next most important thing to do. Wearing it properly over mouth and nose is crucial for us to be healthy and well. So students will be expected to do that. Staff will be expected to do that almost all day. It is going to be a tough standard, and we are going to hold ourselves accountable to it. We, of course, want to wash our hands regularly and hand sanitize them if we can't get to a sink and soap. These last two are important, but they're not within the scope of something that each student and staff member can control. We have specific members of the Loudoun County Public Schools team who are helping make sure that we clean high touch services with regularity and we are filtering the air uh, through our central heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems with in uh, higher quality filters in our main systems. And then every classroom and office has a uh, local area air filter portable that has been installed uh, in the past uh, month or so. So that's the science. We're trying to keep the air clean. We're trying to keep our hands clean, we're maintaining our distance, and we're not coming to school if we don't feel well. So those are the seven principles upon which, six principles upon which the rest of the plan develops. I want you to know that the plans we're going through right now will need to be taught explicitly to your students. We've shared them with staff, we we'll remind staff of them regularly. But I want you to know if your son or daughter is coming to school as a hybrid learner, you should expect to hear them say during the opening week or two of school, those folks are crazy. They're just teaching us all kinds of stuff we already know. We hope they already know it, but we're going to be talking through all these procedures with regularity, very explicitly, not taking anything for granted. Now, we always do this at Dominion High School. Those of you who uh, other than those of you who are freshmen for the first time or freshman parents for the first time, you know that we always spend some time teaching basic and fundamental things like how we respect each other in the cafeteria, show sportsmanship at athletic contests, represent ourselves well during a formal assembly, execute a fire drill for everyone's safety. We just got to add these types of behaviors to that list of things that need to be explicitly taught. We recognize, speaking of freshmen, that they've Many of our freshmen have never set foot in Dominion High School in their life. And if they have been there, it's probably been to the auditorium or the gym. So we need to give them an orientation experience. And we plan to do that in a safe fashion, led by our link crew leaders, who your students have already developed a relationship with during their advisory period. So for those of you who have students who selected hybrid learning and our freshmen, you will receive an invitation on a Monday, we were gonna do it on Monday the 25th. It does not make sense for us to do that. Quite until we get closer to the time of implementation, we'll communicate with you really uh, clearly when that time comes. We'll look forward on a Monday, maybe Monday the 15th of February, for example, might be a key time when we're getting ready to come back to the building. On that day, they'll have a chance to find their way around the building and get comfortable finding their locker and their classrooms and they'll be led in that process by upperclassmen who will be responsible and make sure that they're 
implementing good, safe health mitigation strategies. So let's walk through a day in the life. Students could arrive by bus, by car, by foot, by parent drive drop off. We understand that. We've got plans for every single one of those scenarios. We won't go into those tonight. Uh, other than the bus to say, limited capacity, lots of distance on the bus, got to wear the mask on the bus. Uh, by car, we'd like to say if your son or daughter is driving, what we would prefer is that they don't drive any other non-family members for obvious reasons. Um, however, we understand that keeping lo numbers low on the bus is advantageous. So if your Titan is driving and you got a next door neighbor that you're already spending time with, and that person's going to ride on a regular basis to school with your Titan, I think we can live with that. First of all, that's legal. One passenger, non-family member passenger for a 16 or 17 year old driver. Um, and then it's going to mitigate, obviously, the possibility of us transfer, uh, transit, transmitting a COVID-19 from one to another. So please think about those things as you prepare uh, for driving to school. If your Titan might be doing that. I want to show you our entry procedure. So I'm going to go back to the hybrid learning playbook. Once students get on the property, they're going to enter school very differently than they ever have before. The plan I'm about to share with you is predicated on our very first principle. Nobody who's sick, not even 1% sick, should attempt to come to school on any given day. So we will be asking every student, with the guidance of their parent, to complete a self-assessment, an electronic self-assessment, to determine whether or not they are experiencing symptoms of COVID-19 or symptoms like those of COVID-19. And if so, we're gonna ask them to decline to be in-person learners on any given day and stay at home and learn from distance. Uh, if students are feeling well, they should come by bus, by car, by sea, by land, they can walk, whichever way they're coming to school. When they get there, we wanna show you the game plan for their arrival. So we're going back here. Remember when you're in Schoology, to get to that hybrid learning playbook, you go over to your name, click the carrot, find our community-wide intranet, Dominion High School, click on that. The one very unintuitive thing about Dominion High School is you gotta go down here to resources to find everything. And then you start looking in here about where you wanna be, hybrid learning playbook. And then student procedures. Student procedures, how would students enter the building is one of those procedures. Students entering the building. So student arrival procedures, that's where we wanna look for that type of information. Student arrival by bus, student arrival by car, student drop off by parent. We'll have maps and directions and expectations in, in all these folders. And we already have them when it comes to entering the building. When it comes to entering the building, you'll see a document that's under construction, and it essentially says that we are going to have all of our students entering through a portal into our auditorium, they, where they will be masked, use hand sanitizer as they enter, and they will maintain six feet of distance. So they will be entering. Students this year, in the past, we've let students arrive as early as they would like for a number of different reasons. This year, we're going to have to insist that students arrive precisely no earlier than, no earlier than 845 and no later than 915, actually probably no later than 910 so they can be in class by 915. They're all going to enter this A5 door, which is just to the left of our auditorium and our main entrance. And through there, they will continue without stopping into our auditorium, maintaining that six feet of distance. I realize this presentation is fairly small, but in this auditorium, we have four long aisles as they enter in through the A5 door and into the auditorium, they will queue up in one of these four long aisles. Again, six feet of separation between them. We expect them to be in there for a matter of minutes at the most. At these four stations, we will have a staff member checking the survey results for that particular student and checking their temperature to make sure that they're well before they ever set foot in the school building. That's the first thing that they're going to do. So that's the piece of this that I wanted to share with you. I want to get back to the Pear Deck and let's see.
Let's review. I've got a question here just asking you to write a quick summary, if you would. Sorry, I've been talking forever. I shouldn't have talked more than about 10 minutes before giving you a chance to process information. But that's a really important piece of information there. Would you, if you've signed in on the Pear Deck, would you go ahead at this time and just type in a summary of student check-in procedures? And I'll um, wait a few seconds here and then start to show a few of the responses. We've got 55 people signed up for the Pear Deck, which is so cool. Out of 94 participants in the meeting, thank you. That's amazing. If you don't mind, just go ahead. And it helped me to know that I communicated effectively if uh, some of you would go ahead and just fill in a response there. Put a bullet point or two in there. You don't, don't feel like you have to write a book about the whole thing. Just a few thoughts about what you heard me say about entry procedures. Now, one of our strategies in distance learning, because it's hard to make sure your students are actually doing the work, is we give you sort of a scoreboard here. We've got 55 people in the, in the call who are in the Pear Deck. So far, 12 of you have responded, which is fantastic. I'd love to get that up to 20 in the next 10 or 15 seconds. And then I'll show you some of the responses here. We're at 13 now. See if we can get seven more. I, obviously, if this were the class, I'd be trying for a much higher percentage of that than that. But uh, in this environment, all of you are volunteers for being here tonight. We appreciate you coming so you could become more informed about these processes. All right, getting close to 20. So I'm going to show you the responses here that we have so far. Yes, thank you so much. Arrive between 8.45 and 9.10. Enter the door of the auditorium. Get in one of the four lines. Be masked. We'll have hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer, touchless hand sanitizer as they walk in. They can get some of that and move right into line. Beautiful. Yep, enter through the side door. Line up in the auditorium. Drop off at the front of Dominion High School. Use the side entrance. There'll be a check-in booth. Beautiful. Yep, do the temperature check and the Qualtrics response. There we go. Love it. Thank you so much. Good that uh, feel makes me feel good that we communicated what we intended to in this regard. Now we got in the building. Essentially, students are going to report to their first or fifth block class wherever their first or fifth block class happens to be. At 915, they will log in through a Google Meet to their advisory. Uh, all advisory classes are going to be continue to be done during via distance. And uh, that's just a logistical thing. We don't want shifting kids around one more time in the building, taking up more time, exposing them to more people. Um, we think this can work pretty well. We're doing advisory from distance for most students anyway, once we get to the hybrid learning plan. By the way, we'll have about 250 students in the school building each day, about uh, 550 uh, in combined over the two days. So about 250 to 270 in the building on any given day. A, a thousand of our learners are going to be from distance all the time. So it's uh, distance learning is a good, good approach for our advisories. We will go to the cap. The students will have the opportunity to go to the cafeteria to eat breakfast before reporting to class, as long as they arrive early enough to do so. This year, breakfast and lunch are free to all students. No money will be exchanged at any time. There is a fixed menu with obvious adjustments for dietary restrictions. But we don't have choices like bacon and eggs or chicken and waffles. It's, that doesn't work like that. What we have prepared is what we hand out with those dietary restrictions, of course, being accommodated. Students will be expected to eat the breakfast and consume it all while in the cafeteria for obvious reasons. We don't want them eating, sitting on the floor, eating unmasked in the hallway, uh, just creating a less than uh, first first class uh, safe environment. So we'll eat, they'll have a chance to eat breakfast if they want when they enter. Once the students get to class, we're gonna have classrooms at any given time with one to eight students who are in person. The bulk of the students not uh, are joining through a Google Meet. The seating chart in the room will make sure that your Titan has a six foot circle around her all day long in every class. No one will be seated within her six feet circle. If anybody, for example, the teacher very briefly needs to duck in to that six foot circle, circle to offer some assistance, they're going to get in that six foot circle for a matter of seconds and get back out. We really want our teachers teaching from distance physically that whole time uh, within reason. And again, the critical thing is to make sure we don't accumulate 15 minutes of close contact with any other single individual 
And this scenario should help prevent that from happening. Now, students are gonna be asked to wear their mask all class, no breaks, with their mouth and their nose covered at all times. Um, it, I understand that's a tough standard, but it's a safe standard. We really do wanna reach that goal of having 0% transmission, zero transmissions in the building. That's one of the things that's gonna make it possible. But we really don't want students eating in the classroom. We do understand they need to stay hydrated. So having a bottle of water in the room, slipping up their mask just far enough to take a sip is reasonable accommodation for sure. Restroom use will be permitted. E-hall pass will be used to manage the number of students who are in the restroom at any given time. I want you to know that our instructional model, just remember this is a real brief discussion about instructional model. 70 to 90% of our learners are participating through a Google Meet in every one of these classes, the vast majority. So distance learning instructional structures are going to be predominant, but the in-person learners are going to have the significant advantage of immediate face-to-face -face access to their instructor, which we do think is immensely powerful. So one comment I would make for those of you who are still trying to decide if distance learning or in-person learning best meets the needs of your son or daughter, if distance learning is working well for your Titan, stick with it. If distance learning is not working well, please give us a chance to do this in person at least um, two days a week, please consider doing that so that our instructors can have that increased level of access uh, to help keep your student engaged and support their work. Uh, it is important to note, and, and this was happening before the COVID crisis, LCPS had purchased Chromebooks for every learner to engage them with technology, and in-person learners will be using their Chromebooks extensively. They won't necessarily be tied to a Google Meet, obviously, because the teacher is going to be right there in front of them pre uh, presenting, but they will be using their Chromebooks still fair, fair, a significant amount of the time to complete the work. Uh, quick notes about some special situations in music. We will be able to sing. Students will remain fully masked and socially distanced while we do that, and we're not going to exceed 30 minutes based on um, health recommendations. We, won't, we will not sing for more than 30 minutes during a given class period, but having the opportunity to sing is going to be amazing. Our band students will, uh, orchestra, a guitar will be able to play their instruments. Wind and brass instruments will need some specialized equipment uh, to uh, reduce the emissions of, of uh, water droplets from, from the instruments. So and masks and bell covers will be provided by the school. Uh, we will not be changing for physical education. So the locker rooms will not be available. Backpacks must be stored in the student's hallway locker before coming to class. Otherwise the backpack's gonna be sitting around somewhere unattended for 80 minutes, that's not okay. Uh, we don't allow that to happen under normal circumstances. So students must take a moment to put their backpack in their hallway locker before reporting to physical education. Ninth and 10th grade students will report to the main gym for PE and advanced PE students will be reporting to the weight room. Students gotta bring their own water bottle because we're not using water fountains. Uh, we do have water fountains that dispense purified water but we don't want students drinking out of the water fountain for very obvious reasons. We're gonna go outside as often as we can. And we say weather is good, we don't mean it has to be 72 and sunny. Uh, as long as it's not precipitating and uh, prohibitively cold, we do plan to be outside for everybody's safety and well being. So please ask your Titans to plan accordingly, bring a sweatshirt, you know, wear long pants, things of that nature. And uh, there will be times when our ninth grade students will be in a classroom setting, not a physical education setting. Our 10th graders, I think, have completed the driver's ed module, so they'll be in PE the entire second semester. Career and technical education, we just can't do labs there. there are lots of good reasons for that. We can't cook in the gourmet foods lab. We will be able to use sewing machines in our fashion design class. All right, advisory period. If you could put in a quick response here. Um, during the advisory period, where will that take place? Where will students be physically sitting during their advisory class? If you don't mind, uh, just putting a quick response in there. Multiple choice. Give me a quick sense for whether or not we've been communicating this information clearly. I'm mindful that the time's creeping away and I've been talking a lot. Uh, I'm gonna pick up the pace here and give us a chance to take your questions here in just a moment. Right, our responses are in their fifth or fifth, first or fifth block class, which is absolutely correct. 
All right. Which one of these following practices will not be permitted during class? Six feet apart from others, collaboration, mask breaks, use of the restroom. If you wouldn't mind put, popping in an answer there quickly, multiple choice again. Which one of these are we going to not permit under the circumstances this year? Yeah, mass breaks. Can't do mass breaks. This is going to be tough. I get it. Mass breaks, we'd love to have them. It is going to be tough. I'm going to skip talking about morning announcements. Class changes. We're going to take roughly five minutes to change classes. And um, we're going to remain fully masked during class changes, too, because this is one of those times when it's not possible for us to maintain six feet of distance. This is one of those times when seconds at a time, students and staff members are going to be within the six foot bubble of others. We thought a lot about how to manage this. Do we have staggered release times? That creates a whole host of other problems. Do we do one way hallways? Our building's not really laid out well for that. Our mantra therefore is gonna be stay right, keep moving. Keep moving, stay right. We just don't want students congregating because again, we don't wanna get anywhere near 15 minutes of close contact. It's important to note that in order to avoid those 15 minutes of close contact between individuals, restrooms are gonna be locked during the class changes. Remember, students can use the restroom a few at a time during class. It's not how we'd love to do it. We think it's the safest way to do it. And remember, lockers will be assigned to sophomores and freshmen for use when they go to physical education. Lunches will be served in the cafeteria. We are gonna ask that students wash or sanitize their hands on the way in. Lunch is free, no choices or a la carte items. They can't pay for anything. A one-way flow going through the serving line. Students may bring their own lunch and we do have microwaves that they can use to heat up food. Students uh, obviously waiting in line to use a microwave will use hand sanitizer before they touch the microwave and they'll stay six feet apart. Students will sit seat six feet apart in actual student desks that we have removed from classrooms. And when they're sitting in their student desk, that's when they get a mass break. That is the mass break for the day. I know that's tough. We have many students at school, a dozen a day now, coming for our internet cafe, and, and they're doing this. They're making it. I'm sure they don't love it, but it is doable. Please note, we're not going to accept parental deliveries of food from Chick-fil-A, Uber Eats. We're not going to accept any of those anymore. That's been a problematic annoyance for us, very distracting during the day. But under these circumstances, as you can appreciate, we really need to limit uh, the number of people, different people who are entering the building and the possibility that one, even one person might come in and start a transmission wave within our building. So we will not be accepting deliveries of food. Students may bring their own or we will certainly provide them with food. Very quickly, what's our mantra during class changes? One way hallways, stay out of somebody's six foot bubble. We didn't think those things were quite going to work. So we got stay right, keep moving. Stay right, keep moving is our game plan. Thank you so much, everybody. All right. Which one of these statements describes our lunchtime protocols most effectively? Students will be expected to report to the cafeteria. Students will wash and or sanitize hands. Lunch will be free. Students may bring their own lunch. Students may take their mask off when seated. Ah, all the above, all those statements are right. So you can answer any one of these, select any one of these and you'd be right. Thank you so much. All right. We have access to lots of resources during the day using e-hall pass or appointment. We'll iron that, all those details out before we get back to school. Just want to point out that we have two nurses office. We have a well room, our nurses office for routine medication and injuries. Like you got a nosebleed or you twisted your ankle in PE, you're experiencing menstrual discomfort, we can take care of that in our nurse's office, but only well visits. If we have uh, anybody who's experiencing communicable disease symptoms, they go to a care room and they are cared for differently. Every person essentially who goes to the care room is on track to be uh, picked up by their parent and at least for a precaution taken home. Um, and then for dismissal procedures, we um, simply need students to leave the building promptly. Everybody has to leave. There's no after school use of the library, after school tutoring. We're so sorry about that. This just is not the time for that. Um, we'll get back to that, you know, someday. And even students who have extracurricular activities will need to step out of the building and check back in using that particular sport or extracurriculars 
protocol. We have those protocols outlined that are being used now by those students who are coming in the building. All right, I'm gonna skip over the questions that we have. I'm gonna skip over quarantine guidelines because as we get closer to the time, that's gonna make more sense. And I wanna turn our attention toward questions. If you're in the Paradigm and you click that link, you can put a question in our a Google form that will help us. We can get back to you on those questions. Um, I'm gonna to try to find what I did to lose the chat. Uh, I'm gonna stop presenting if I can possibly figure out how to do that. Stop presenting. I should hit a red button, I think, to do that. Stop share. I gotta find my chat. There it is. All right. What are all e-hall passes? And does my child need a phone? Excellent question. E-hall pass is a program that they can access through their Chromebook. So your student will not need a phone to use e-hall pass. They will use their Chromebook. Thanks for asking that, Ms. Banks. Only five minutes between classes. They couldn't meet the 15 minute close contact by going to the bathroom. That, while that is true, it's still not best practice for us to pile 15 people into a bathroom um, and be on top of one another. One of the things I want you to know, we visited lots of, we visited three other schools that have been doing hybrid learning uh, in the fall and we studied their, their um, practices. And these are those that we felt were gonna be most uh, the, the most safe in our school environment. So I uh, totally agree with that statement. Uh, Mrs. Rose, we just think it's best for us to make sure that we have fewer students in the bathroom than a, than a pile who would all go there at a class change. Yeah, I think the benefit of hybrid learning really is that you get to have that immediate access to ask the teacher the question for the teacher to look over your shoulder from six feet away and give you some feedback and encourage you along the way. There is no question in-person learning is way, way better opportunity for immediacy of feedback, which is so important to the learning process, especially on an individual level. Can't Certainly can't underestimate how powerful it is to be present in the room with your own teacher. There's no question about it. It is powerful and we definitely want to encourage uh, students, especially if distance learning is not working for them to take advantage of the power of being in the presence of a caring teacher who can provide immediate feedback. No one is cleaning desks in between classes. Loudoun County Public, there are school systems that are have protocols for doing that. Loudoun County Public Schools is not taking that approach. One of the reasons, Mrs. Lemon Jelly, is that the disinfectant also has its negative consequences. So again, remember, we're, we're doing everything we can to make sure the student who sat in that desk during first block wasn't sick to begin with. And so when they sit down, when the next student comes in and sits down in that desk, and we'll certainly use other desks to the extent we possibly can and maintain six feet of distance, um, we, we are uh, working hard to make sure that uh, we, we don't transmit COVID-19 there. All right, let's see, we got. Yeah, hybrid learning has been postponed, that's right. It will not start next Thursday as scheduled. And um, when we post this presentation tomorrow on the Atlas website and the Dominion High School website, you'll be able to see my explanation of that early in the presentation. All right, let's see, is there going to be a specific procedure for dropping off student meds? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, parents will have to do that as always, and uh, we will get you in touch with our nurse so you can do that. Yes, indeed, thank you so much, Mr. Hart. All right, my friends, I'm so grateful that you came tonight. I realize you probably have a lot of questions that I didn't get to, sorry, I talked longer than usual. And, um, there's so much to say about this, obviously. Getting back to you about your questions is really important to us, though. So please, if you would, uh, drop those in to the Google form so that we can get back to you. We'll do that in short order by next week, if not by tomorrow. And um, we're going to transition over, obviously, to making this presentation now to our community that will better receive it in Spanish. We're so grateful for your support, your interest in this topic. And... Um, Yes, we have a thermal temperature thing. We don't know, how, I'll be honest, we don't know how to operate yet, but we'll get trained before your sons and daughters are coming and tell you all about it at the next town hall. Ms. Flebert, thank you so much.
Have a great night, everybody. Go Titans.